Good morning again. We have now left Muscat, but before we did that, we stopped at a supermarket to pick up some water and some pita, hummus, and nuts, just some supplies to get us through the day. And we are now driving to Nizwa. Five minutes out from our Airbnb and I'm curious as to what your impressions are of driving in Amman. It's actually been fine. The infrastructure here for roads is pretty good. I think just because of the heat then some of the roads have been slightly warped on one of the lanes so you just have to kind of move over. But yeah they are pretty intense about speeding here to the point where there seems to be a speed camera probably every kilometer which seems a bit excessive but yeah the other slightly interesting thing is that with every rental car here then they already have a inbuilt speed detector so the instant that you go like at the absolute limit which is 120 kilometers here then you get incessantly beeped at until you come back down but all in all though, it's actually been perfectly fine. Yeah, the roads are not that busy compared to Turkey, I feel like. No, definitely And not. also, you were saying in Turkey how some of the speed limits weren't very clear, whereas here, they're signposted everywhere, everywhere. and it's... Yeah, absolutely. It's been very, very easy to follow the rules of the road here. Other drivers maybe haven't been quite as down for that sometimes. You get somebody in a very, very expensive looking car who's cruising along at at least 140, who thinks that you should move to the side because they're the most important thing on the road. But, you know, you get that everywhere. So, just one of those things. Good morning from Nizwa, Oman. We made a quick pit stop at the grocery store as well as at a coffee shop this morning. We got two coffees and they were 200 like real cents, I guess, which equals 70 cents Canadian for both of them. So I think that's the score of the century, although we haven't tried them yet. So who knows what it tastes like. But for now, we're going to be exploring the area and we are starting with Bala Fort today. So let's go. So we tried the cardamom version of this cake thing a while ago and we love those. And this is the saffron version of it, which is another traditional spice. So we've been eager to try it. But what did you think, babe? Um, they were fine. They just tasted like a normal cake like there wasn't seemingly anything particularly special or anything that made you think oh wow that's definitely saffron um yeah personally i think the cardamom ones had a more distinct flavor so that's my preference so far Number one, this is the oldest fort in Oman, and that kind of makes sense because Bala was the capital of Oman back in the day. Another reason is that this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and they took particular interest in this fort because of the age and history here. But as you can see, these walls, this structure, was made out of straw and mud, which with weather can erode and deteriorate super, super quickly. So UNESCO actually came in and 
put up cement walls over the mud and straw walls in order to preserve this so we can visit it to this day. The other reason that we came here is an economic reason. It's pretty cheap. It's only six Omani Real to come here, which works out to about 20 Canadian dollars. Inside right now is known as Bayt al Hadith, which is the modern house. This makes up one of four different main parts of this fort that we're going to be exploring today. In its heyday, this fort wasn't just used for the sake of defense, it was also a seat of government. So, actually, this was where the governor and his family would be living at that time. exploring the Kasbah, which is the oldest part of this fort, and it dates back to 1000 AD. The one thing that I'll say about this, it is massive. It's a maze, kind of choose your own adventure, so have fun running around, playing hide and seek. to what we think is the top of the Casbah, which is one of the major turrets of the entire fort in itself. And we came across this, which in the absence of any stairs that take you up to this bit above, looks like a ladder made out of palm trees. which is also known as the Mountain House. This seems to be one of the most restored areas of the fort. And because of that, then they decided to put up each of these little placards to give you a little bit of a history of the site in itself. Now, according to this, it seems like there was settlement, if not in this fort, definitely in this area, as early as the 3rd millennium BC, so we're talking 5,000 years ago. But in terms of its usage as a fort in its true heyday, then really that was only within the last thousand years. The most prominent of which the Bani Nakban tribe who used this as a fortress and a seat of government from the 12th to the 15th century AD. So I do apologize, over the last few countries I've been sweating a lot. The reason for this is because we are currently reaching temperatures of around 40 degrees. When I look at AccuWeather it shows one temperature, but then the real feel is about 10 degrees hotter, mostly due to humidity around this area. So bear this in mind, if you are wanting to come in the summer months, then you do have to compete with the heat. We are stocking up on water as best as we can, and we would advise you to do the same even if you came in the colder times. This is really, really cool. 
cool. We have seen buildings that have been made out of mud bricks before. When we went to Morocco, we went to Ibn Ben Hadou, where there are multiple casbars that are made of the same material. However, this is definitely the first time that we've seen a fort and definitely a structure of this magnitude that's been made out of these amazing materials. And beyond the bits that have been restored, you can clearly see each of the separate bits that's gone into this. You can see the wood from the beams that clearly was from local trees. And then on top of that, then as you kind of run your hands along the wall, you can feel the straw and everything like that. So the very fact that they were able to construct it with what we would consider to be incredibly basic materials to the point where it's also not just a standing structure in its own right, but one that helps insulate against the searing heat. It's amazing, really cool. I thought it was really worth the visit because in a lot of European countries, you're going to like palaces and cathedrals and things. And then in Muslim countries like this too, you're gonna to see mosques, but it was just interesting for me to see a different type of building that has history and has a different architectural style. So that's why I really enjoyed coming to this fort. Right, let's get back into our lovely air-conditioned car before we melt and then we head on to our next place. We have just parked at what we are hoping is the start of Alhama Ruins. According to the blog I read, you can just park on the side of the road and walk around. So let's hope the car doesn't get towed or ticketed. similarities in the building materials compared to Bala Fort, which we were just at. As you can see, the walls are clearly made of mud and straw, and the ceiling, like the beams and stuff, are tree trunks, which is exactly what we saw at the fort. used to be inhabited about 700 to 1,000 years ago, so people believe. And it was thriving, it was bustling, and then all of a sudden, its inhabitants just left. No one really knows why. A local theory is that people just wanted to move to a more modern-facing city, and so therefore they went to other neighboring towns instead, or some of them went to the capital, but by them, leaving everything behind, then everything just fell into disrepair and this is the end result. Our camera overheated while we were walking around Alhammer Ruins, so we had to stop filming, but I think we pretty much captured what the abandoned village was like and it just blew my mind. The fact that something was still standing 700 to 1,000 years after it was inhabited is incredible. And of course, yeah, it is dilapidated. But it was also interesting having seen Bala Fort earlier in the day because obviously that was built using the same materials and it had very similar architectural styles, but that one was restored by UNESCO. So it was interesting to see this because if UNESCO hadn't stepped in, that's what Bala Fort would have looked like. I think that was probably like my first ever proper 
close town, so to speak. And it was just really, really interesting. I think um, obviously in itself it was just an amazing time capsule of what was. I just wish that there had been enough of a documented history so that you could understand what happened. Like why are those buildings just empty shells now? Like what happened to make everybody move and migrate? It would have been really interesting to kind of have gotten the whole picture of this entire settlement and then I think it would have made a lot more sense. And that information just doesn't seem to exist, even on Google. We just don't know why. Yeah, there's still an amazing site to go and check out and like we were the only people that were there as well, so. Yeah, if you want to do something off the beaten tourist track, then Alhama Ruins should be on your list. Definitely. We're now heading back. It is absolutely scorching and we didn't really have much else planned on our itinerary today anyway, so we're going to call it that. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.